All right, so you are wild hunting still. And how far have you gotten since I've seen you in game? Let's see. Is your level finally on 273? All right, yeah, so your level is finally in the stat window now, but it's in like in the top of the stat window all the way on top. So with the screenshot, I actually can't see it still. Still wild that that's not considered a that important of a stat for them. 273. All right, and how's that going? Um, I mean, trying to grind 14, 15% a day right now to put in, you know, two ops. It's it's exhausting, but definitely going to take a grind back once 275 and just coast on from there. So you're trying to keep like a level a week going? Um, yeah, I mean, give or take. I usually try to shoot for at least two ops a night. But, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes things don't go as planned. Work, I'll get out three hours later than I'm supposed to. Then I'm staying up till five o'clock in the morning. And I'm trying to get off that schedule of being up till five, six o'clock and then waking up at 11 a.m. Yeah, I, uh, well, <laughs> for me, for me, it's the same first part, but not the second part. Not the getting up that early, so... I feel that, but uh, so, but you're be making steady progress towards 275. Yeah, once uh, once 275 hits, I'm gonna slow down and work a little bit more on Legion, but not too too worried on that. I I you know mm -hmm. took some time off Legion once Identisk and that I pushed from the end of Identisk to now from 260 to 273. So mm -hmm. that was my uh, motivation for grinding at the time. Gotcha. And the current event uh, has got a lot of potions and stuff, so you get an automatic push towards 8k anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it should be pretty automatic, but once once we get into Legion, there's... Uh, I haven't made too, too many classes. I think I'm only at 37 right now, and I'm at 7.2. Mm -hmm. So my average level is a little bit higher than what it should be right now. Gotcha, yeah. Because I, you know pushed most of my characters manually grinded them to 200 during identisk and you know mm -hmm. left yeah because of the food storehouse and everything like that right that was uh no no just manually grinded i think i was That's doing i was doing two wops on my main and then every night i was doing zero to 140 and i would wake up the next morning and do 140 to 200 <laughs> damn okay that was, was that a good pace or is that why you took a little bit like you know off time from that and just focus on one character now i mean it, it was it was a good pace for me you know it's, i was getting off work earlier so i had plenty of time i wasn't staying at work till 12 o'clock at night i was you know getting home mm -hmm. at 10 and you know had that extra two hours to burn but i ran out of two x coupons there was no identicus event everything else like that so it wasn't wasn't anything i could really do for legion at the time yeah you get that reduced efficiency on your time because of the scaling past a certain amount of hours right Yep. Like you can't get the same efficiency anymore on hour number 12 or hour number like 30 in the week compared to uh, yep. number 6, yeah. But that at least this more at least this uh, this event's allowing me to do, you know, 3 hours straight a day on the main. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sad that the special effect with the monster kills is is over in like what 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, short, I was uh, expecting park. it to be a lot more, you know, I was mm -hmm. trying to hop on mules to at least do a couple of the uh, special effects and it wasn't, you know, getting three levels at 100 like Identisk did. Yeah, no, it's not, it's a different, I mean, it, that's a big difference between like a big summer slash winter event or just, you know, like a fill, it's not like a filler event per se, because it definitely, that would be downplaying a little bit how good it is but it's definitely on a step below a big summer and winter like a seasonal event right mm -hmm. okay um so more legion with this event um you're still putting in the hours would you um do you know like roughly how much you make in a week um, if, if we shoot for the minimum I do, which is one WAP a day, that's about a, you know, about a bill a day times that by seven. Mm -hmm. And then I have my two boss mules, which are about two, 2.5 bill a week. Mm -hmm. And then my main, which is anywhere from, um, the I think the main's bossing, if we didn't include c 10 is probably about 1.5 seven 1.6 and with c10 it's about two so it's anywhere from 
anywhere from like 11 or 12 to like 16, 17 bill, depending on how much I end yeah, up grinding cool. that week. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of wops in. Okay. And you're saying if that includes C10A, so that's not something you have static party for? Well, we do have static party, but this was the first week and we six manned it and we cleared mm -hmm. all of C10A in 10 minutes. So okay. we're looking as if we want to maybe do down to a five man or kind of kind of just reevaluate things. We overestimated yep. how much we uh, were really looking at. Yeah, I guess when you're not doing it for a long time, you want to make sure that you don't just spend a whole bunch of time just failing. And then when you go in with all your damage, you're like, oh, this wasn't that spooky. <laughs> Although, you know, if you yeah. cut a party in half, it immediately gets a lot harder, you know, because of the yep. amount of binds, origins, you know, synergy, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it does yeah. sound like you guys can at least, yeah, you could try to split up in, in two parties and give everyone double the money and double the odds for pitches, right? Yeah. Well, the good thing about our group, so we used to trio it, my initial trio. We were trioing Gloom in about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and then we wanted to start kind of taking on Dark Nell, Vihilla, mainly for Arcane Boxes, and luckily we found two other um, people who are just running Boss Mules permanently that only want Arcane Boxes. No pitches, no drops, they just care about Boxes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're only doing four-person Blink right now. But with three of us gotcha. being, you know, friends, we basically play every single day for the past two months. You know, we're more so looking at each other's account, like, okay, who who will get the most from a Twilight Mark or a belt or a ring? And that's kind yeah. of what we have the discussion every week of, you know, not so much who's blinking for it, but who is going to get the next drop for progression. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, it, it, it gets hard with pitch because it's like everyone wants it and it's like well you already have more pitch so you would technically get more from it because you can then wear it but then someone else who doesn't have any pieces might feel like what well, then i'd never get anything <laughs> but then you become prio but then later right that's a have, have you guys what's your strategy there um, the stra it's, it's really just like gear wise so for me like myself when we run lu will i don't claim book my my um my cup is a 142 flame score so for me to get a good um for me to get a good flame on that it's going to cost too much money compared to them which only have you know 60 yeah. flame score cups at that mm -hmm. point it's just more proactive for them to get that but for me i don't have meister rings i didn't have twilight mark so for me mm -hmm. getting a ring or getting a twilight mark was substantially better because they have sweet waters gotcha wait by the way i see is there an I I think there might be an item here cut off, or is that not a... Oh, it's a horntail pendant here. It just says item yeah, drop Yeah, I dragged it down to the next one, because if I sent all uh, eight of them on one picture, it made it way too small. Right, yeah, sometimes it'll resize, right? Yeah. <laughs> then you have to, like, zoom in like it's for ants. Okay. All right, um, so... So you don't know quite yet what you're... If you're just going to stay with the current C10A... You said you found two people, so you still have a fourth person. So if you would split up, you you mean like it would be like a duo with someone that you're carrying, basically. No, oh, currently right now we're a six man. So we have a um, we have a two seventy one Nightwalker, we have a two seventy six Adele, two seventy one Elium, and a two sixty Bishop. Me and then a uh, pre lib Dom Dawn Warrior, not Dawn Warrior, uh, Demon Slayer. Mm-hmm. And we're literally just bl going in there, blowing it up for arcane boxes, and you know, going from there. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you, know, you can use you can use some of those because you have a sh you have one shoe, right? I mean, at least I can see here in the background. Yeah. Mhm. Mm but it needs to overpower your current Absol Lab before you can uh, swap on over. Yeah. Yeah, those photos are a little outdated, like two hours. I just dropped two bill on cubing, so it's about even now. They're both two lines, but it's just I don't have money to get them to 17 stars yet, so I'm not wearing them currently. But they're both two lined. Uh, I think they're both 23% now. Oh, the the shoulder and the shoe, you mean? These two? The shoe is 23. Mm -hmm. And then I think the gloves are still the same in the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, critical damage lost that. So would you say you're pretty much like money in, money out right now? Yeah, right now it's just money in, money out, and I, you know, I, I usually, my goal is I usually try to go into Wednesday with anywhere from 8 to 10 bill, because if something drops, then I, you know, I cube it. Unfortunately, I've got, I got my weapon last week, 
I bought an arcane last week, and then I got mm -hmm. two arcane drops this week and a twilight mark. So I'm scraping for money right now. <laughs> yeah, because you're trying to get those projects started. But wait, you bought one and weapon and two armor, so you're you're done now then? I a cape as bought well, one, or? got a weapon, and got two drops. So the only thing I'm missing right now is a cape. Oh, one. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're saying one, one short. Okay. All right, that's pretty nice, yeah. I mean, and, you know, one short to get the set complete, but you're never done until <laughs> everything's like 21 or 22, no 22s. Right? Yeah. So that's the goal. And is that same group of people looking towards Black Mage then soon? Um, I mean, yeah, we're all looking towards Black Mage. One of us, the uh, Nightwalker, has already started Black Mage. They red dot it for a carry mm -hmm. um, this month. Uh, the other the other ones, I'm not too too sure. The uh, three fills that we have, because they're you know just Alliance members that are running on mules. I don't know if they're going to really take them that far. But mm -hmm. the three main people are, you know, we're shooting for Black Mage. But, you know, that's a mix of me getting a new computer and us kind of learning a group how to uh, boss Black Mage. Yeah, is, is your computer unreliable or what's the, it's just old, an old uh, piece of junk or? It's, it's, it's 10 years old, i5 with DDR3 RAM. Mm-hmm. So I load into a boss and I load in probably about a minute after everybody does. Yeah. Yeah, for Black Mage, that's not super handy. And that's really why we're six manning C10 right now. It's just because we don't, you know, if we try to, we could trio it, but it's not a trio. It's, you know, two and a quarter, two and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So you're just saving up for that. You're saving up in game and IRL for. Uh... For a big upgrade there, getting some second-hand parts or yep. something. I feel like you can. Yep, everybody. Uh, everybody makes. Uh, everybody makes jokes that I get a new computer. That's a twenty percent final damage right there. <laughs> it's probably not wrong though. I mean, if you're yeah, if you're lo lagging, lagging in right, like loading in and lagging at the same time for for that long, that will make a significant difference. It's the entirety. Once Origin bursts, I can't get off to um, I can't get off to attacks during my Jaguar Storm, and I'm you know missing damage because I can't pop a B link quick enough, and it all just trickles down, you know. So yeah. I am overly stat, overly geared compared to basically where the rest of my group is, but it's just mm -hmm. the fact that I have to have that to be on par with them because of the computer. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, it is. Um, is it interesting to see though that you're I mean, you're still like pretty much in right now at least like wearing the abzo and still already at that point of course like 17 abzo to to 17 arcane that's a nice like nice boost it's not insane but that's a nice uh, boost usually you know the, the flames coming in and if you're going a little bit harder on those right um but it's mostly of course when you just start jumping past 17 on arcanes which for you might be a lot sooner than you <laughs> than you think i mean if you get backups before then right you just kind of keep uh keep sending them up and it's, it's just really based on whatever backups are i think yeah. this was my 11th week of lucid will this was my third week of sea gloom and you know this is the first week where i've gotten drops and everybody mm -hmm. else in my party you know i'd already gotten two arcanes a weapon a couple raking boxes i've zeroed out on everything mm -hmm. i mean yeah I it's hard to compare like because i think my marksman was running for a year and a half on hard loose and hard will before i saw anything so you know there's there's always like stories of people who've gotten like two items on their first run and then there's people who've never gotten seen anything in like years and it's hard to really <laughs> say like what is what is normal and what should you expect you know that's always a tricky one um so um i guess you know that's a i think that's a good intro right we got a good idea of like where you're at and where you're going and how how you're playing um, did you have specific questions for me that you want to make sure are handled during this time? I mean, not there? too, not too in-depth questions. It's, mm -hmm. it's more so, I guess, a lot having to do with this event and kind of looking on sure. the rest of the progression of the actual account, more so mm -hmm. the character. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a lot of flames coming in, a lot of cubes coming in. We have two event rings and it's kind of just... 
getting to the point where am I going to push a little bit more into this, or should I start putting it onto a separate uh, separate character to kind of progress something else? And, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to, like, event rings, I'm still missing a ring for um, a line of drop rate when opening boss crystals, but do I want to use an event ring on that, or do I want to wait for, you know another ring wait for another superior ring or slime ring or something of that sorts yeah so when it comes to the ring like the slime ring is is obviously like the next uh kind of logical thing that hopefully you get into right for so when it comes sadly and like playing with your friends together i don't know if you want to make it like a 1v1 if you want race every week or something but it it, the, the game rewards you for like soloing as early as possible, right? It's not because you want to not get the drop from your friend, but you can all three get a potentially a drop, right? Yeah. And scaling up towards doing longer and more boss fights, but with fewer people, will mean that you will spend more time in boss fights per week, but you will need way fewer weeks on average to be able to progress to the next step. So that might be something that once you start stop like whopping as much, once you hit 275, that you start getting more into, I guess. Because then some time will free up there, right? Not not grinding as much, but then spending that time instead doing more bosses, either solo or duo, so that you can have a better chance. Because the thing with the rings is like in the past, you know, it would be very low drop rate way in the beginning. Everyone wanted the, the rings and sea slime was still a lot harder. So people would do like the transfer hammer with superior and everything. But now because of six job and because of how strong people can get and because of the nerf to to see slime it makes way more sense to in the beginning run together so hopefully you, you can you know get some ring boxes but then as soon as you can start scaling down on the party size so that you can become higher up in the list for slime rings so you can get backups and just tap on the ring itself without having to dip into your uh, helix coin fund so that that can exclusively stay to like 21 and 22 your superior stuff um then yeah so that means you're slowing down a little bit on the on the first ring that you get but hopefully you finish up with you know all 21s all 22s whatever you're going for uh, a lot faster in in total but i don't know if you guys have like tried solo um slime but if you you know if you're like trioing it basically um and then you're doing the other ones in under we, 10 minutes we I are that trioing it we trioed it last no no we duoed it last week with a mm-hmm. uh, permanent um Beast Tamer Slave, we and the Nightwalker. We did that in about 15 minutes. So we have the Adele with us now, but we're losing the Beast Tamer. So that's, you know, making it a 15 minute run with three of us. So I don't think any of us are quite yeah, in the uh-huh. range of soloing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would take but, a little bit longer. But, you know, once we, once we get to that, then it will definitely be a, you know, the Nightwalker is obviously the strongest right now. So he will split off first. Mm-hmm. And then we'll kind of, you know, duo it with the Adele. And then once, you know, we're able to split off again, then we will. But as of now, none of us really want to spend 30 minutes in fights. So we're no. all pretty fine just, you know, okay. grouping up and waiting until we get, you know, 15 minute run solos and kind of dispersing from there. Yeah, ideally, if you can do like, if you can pick up like two of the big bosses within like your half hour G skills and stuff like that, that's usually a good measure, I think. That would be for me, that would be like the max of how much time you want to spend in because then you've got like you know a g skill if you want to do like lucid and will one if you want to do like slime and like fihella maybe and then one if you want to do like dark Knell and gloom or something but that's already like an hour and a half of bossing in a week right just on one character that's already a lot so yeah. that'd be like i mean it's less than a whop a day of course right so if you can split it out it's not it's not the worst thing but it does uh it's a commitment for sure but if you want your general progress to not stagnate and that comes down to getting backups and that comes down to having drop rate and clearing the bosses so ultimately that's what it just keeps keeps coming down to drop rate story and uh yeah <laughs> and the solo story sadly uh because it is an mmo but it comes down to to that i wish more stuff was was uh, instance instead of shared so you could just you know reward people for doing things together instead of rewarding people for playing alone on an online game but that's kind of the game. sadly that's uh that's the situation that we're in um to go back to the the event items and stuff that you were saying um i can understand especially because your current event ring is a 30 percent um so that's gonna stick with you for a bit uh 
But even, you know, you know, like a 17 slime with, like, half-decent potential is probably already going to blow that out of the water. Um, and then this one will end up becoming a drop or mezzo piece anyway, right? Uh, originally, yeah. both my event rings were actually 30%, and I think when I got my superior ring is mm -hmm. when I dropped my f first event ring, and I cubed that to just a line of drop and two lines of uh, stat, and then you know, mm -hmm. went on from there, and I, I I think now with the update too for Meister, I might start creating Meister rings, but I've just been holding off to do Meister until we got the update that we got yesterday to start with that. Yeah, Meister is, um, well, if you're talking about like whole account progress, Meister is something that you want to definitely make a good choice on because Meister is the one transferable ring we have, right? Um, and that could help other characters that you want to bring up. I would say, like, if you want to bring characters up past the point of, like, being an okay damage dealer in hard lucid hard will, basically. If you want to go past that, then you might need to dip into the ring fund to get, like, strong rings in there. And if your kind of treasures are just not dropping, then you might need Meisters to, like, supplement that slot. But you'll end up probably with superior reinforced slime and then kind of treasure or... Excuse me, Meister. But... You know, there's also Oz rings there. If you go heavy into Meisters now, um, man, it, it will probably end up like replacing the the Expedition ring, right? And then, you know, if you get your slime, that replaces the Reinforce. And then if you get an Oz ring, what do you do then? Then you replace the Meister again. So it doesn't seem like it's a super longevity upgrade because you're already actively looking for replacements for it. So that's why I am not like my mind isn't exactly going there my mind is more going towards like how can we make sure that you get like a high star for superior Golux, um and and more slime rings right that's that's more where i'm looking at it because oz rings you know they can come they can go but like well they can't really go unless you drop them but when they do come like it's immediately going to knock out one of your uh rings and so the expedition ring is probably like that one is close on its way out. Reinforced, I don't want to push too much because of, you know, the backups will cut into your superior Golux fund. So that one's also, I'm not looking at too much. So I'm looking at trying to get your superior high and trying to get into slime. And then that last slot, um, yeah, if that ends up having to be a Meister, so be it. But I want to wait a little bit longer to make that decision because there's still other stuff. You know, there's still Twilight Marks past 17. They're still getting all of your other... Uh, superiors up to 20, right? Either through fodder or with backups. Like, that's another big project that I would probably focus on before all of that. And, you know, potentially Black Bee Mark, you know, getting like a 20 there. And walking all of your Arcanes up to 17 and probably slowly getting those to 19. Um, and then probably another round of cubing. And that's when I would look at the rings after that, probably. That makes sense. That makes sense. Just because you want to make sure that it's the absolute good decision for you to do it in that moment and that there's no like alternative that makes sense because there's a good chance that before that time it works itself out and now you can save all of your materials and now you can do another character where you want to speed up the progress a bit that doesn't get any kind of treasures for like a month. You can just make a bunch of Meisters there and boom, immediately make a 21 Meister and you know, get that slot filled without having to... You know, just deal with that bad RNG. Essentially, you can buy good RNG with those uh, with those items. I don't think at the, the standpoint in time, or at least the near future, I'm going to work 21 on mules. I think both of my mm -hmm. mules are literally 10 star everything and going there. You know, 15, 17 is probably more reasonable, and then deciding on who I decide to second yeah. main or third what, main. Yeah, when know, I I'll when I say that. Yeah, when I say that, I'm more talking about, like, next hyper burn or something. So something that's going to probably make it to 260 and that you might want to push past 260. That that would be, okay. a, that would be a, a character where you want to make that decision probably. Yeah, not like a 240 or something. Definitely not. You make a 17 or maybe try to, like, swing a 19 and see if it works, right? Because if something swings to 19, that's, that's very low risk. But it's also way better than an event ring. So you know for sure that you have a slot filled and you don't necessarily need to event ring. But for now, I would probably like spread event rings because um, you have a decent amount. What you want to avoid is that your character ends up with like 16 legendary accessories because you every single time another one comes out that's slightly better than one you already have, you get another one to legendary because you're going to get to a situation where 
either the damage on the item matters, and that means you need like 19 to 21 star stuff, or it doesn't matter, and then it doesn't matter if it's like the strongest event ring or a silver blossom ring, basically. Right, because you're opening a box or you're killing in areas where you can just, with your eyes closed, you'd like fart in the general direction of the monster and it keels over, right? So if it's super, imp yeah, so that's why I wouldn't take too many event rings on a character that's already disestablished. Um, this established and use that instead to like fund an extra slot on a on a potential future bossing meal maybe someone that's one that's up and coming or if you still have a slot available on a current character that you know could use a little bit more love maybe oh, that's completely un un understandable um i guess most of the problem why a lot of the stuff i'm pushing for damage while grinding is i'm progressing faster than we're supposed to be mm -hmm. so i'm getting sack gated and for yeah. me to overcome sack gating you know Granted, I was looking on my accessories for, you know, hybrids, but unfortunately, every time I go for hybrids, I always end up getting two line stat and a line of dropper meso. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm, I'm like, I'm, that's why I'm pushing so much damage, but it's probably that time to kind of start, you know, that's just said once 275 hits, I can slow down. I don't need to worry about min maxing five attack mm -hmm. power for, you know, a ring. Yeah, because what happens is you have to overfund by so much because you're saccated. And then just to be a, just to be able to be in that area a little bit longer, that costs you so much extra money that for some accounts it's definitely worth it. But I don't know if your account is in that position where that's like the go-to, because then as soon as you're not segregated anymore, all of your gear is like completely overfunded and all of that value is almost like instantly lost again. So I'd rather have you like hold mm. back like one area, train in the one area below it if you want to keep going, dump all of that money into bossing mules, start cashing in every week on bossing mule gain, and then when you do need the money for like a n the next next area, now you have all the money at your disposal. Now you can throw it at it, right? Because you said like your your weekly income is good, but with that much grinding, um, just like on bosses, my weekly income, for example, is like approaching like thirty, and that's completely aside from like grinding and Ursus and all that stuff. So if you have your whole account more set up to be able, well, again, I guess we don't know how long that's gonna, you know, that number's gonna last. But the order of magnitude of the number should last because it doesn't seem like there's gonna be any change to the crystal amount, right? So I don't know if there's, yeah, more characters. You know, going on the crystal looking. amount. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess that's something that why I haven't been pushing too hard of boss mules because I think I created my first boss mule when that a patch got put out. Mm -hmm. So I'm, um, you know, I'm hesitant on yeah. Immediately foot off the gas like a bunch mm. of boss mules. Yeah, yeah, okay, understandable. It it is something that you can just let it be, get decided by events, right? Like if an event just pushes a character into like the two thirties, then you might as well, you know, look around and do some bosses with it. Um, like I've said before in a lot of sessions, like I do, I did it very organically, but of course, like you know, five five six years ago. Uh, so I had a lot of time where I basically just be doing bosses and then I get cubes, I get flames, I just throw those onto whatever is the next character because eventually they'll just ruin your potential and ruin your flames on your on your main character, right? And then as you trickle them down to the next character, that character gets a bit stronger and now it makes reasonably more time to start doing some runs with them. And then you get even more items and now you have even more every week to throw into the next character and now that one gets reasonably right and it just keeps going like that and it keeps keeps coming back more and more faster and faster um until eventually you know you're if you're in my situation now you get like a hundred solar cubes a week and i kind of don't even know what to use them on anymore i'm just like randomly getting stat on my bishop that i'm not even playing you know um, then you can just start dropping them but um until you get to that point, there's like a big ramp up. And the, the good thing though about that ramp up is that your Legion raid power will go up a lot as well, which will give you way more uh, Legion coins. Because if you if you want to grind that much, which, you know, you have my blessing to do that. Uh, we talked what we talked about way in the beginning, right? You get to that point quicker where you start losing the efficiency on your time. If you can't also get good value out of uh, the Legion shop and that kind of stuff. So Legion raid power will become your, your bottleneck. And I, and I think that's going to be my next big push is I'm going to I'm going to try to go into 10. Um, what's it called? The two two star for one ten with, you know, mm -hmm. probably about 20, 20 to 40 bill and just try to go through every, you know, everything, cubing up Penslier, you know, getting boss sets gear and just cubing every not cubing uh, star mm -hmm. forcing everything just to kind of mm -hmm. bring up the Legion power the best I can without, you know, 
investing CRAs and Golux and everything else like that into them. Yeah, one uh, or I guess two small tips for that is if you do, um, even if characters aren't wearing overalls, if you do overalls, it only costs you half as much because the stars on overalls cost double, right? And the other thing is that if you are, um, a lot of characters can wear shields, but they might not be able to use shields, but they can still equip them. And if you do that, a shield plus a lower level weapon that you can find that's like one-handed or something will give you quite a bit more star force than if you try to like star force a higher level weapon that you're already using. And that'll and it'll cost less in total as well. So it's only like a little bit difference. Maybe it's like five or six extra stars. But you do that on 20 characters. Now you have 120 extra, right? So it, it does add up quite nicely. Long way. Um, yeah, and you'll get some more. Well, you had a plenty of 200s, but you've got like three more characters you can add and then a bunch more levels. I see you getting 8k pretty quickly because it seems like you definitely have the the grind set to uh, to achieve that. So I'm not uh, doubting that at all. But I guess I'll have it... my Burninator okay. and the Terra Burninator. So that's an extra 350 levels that aren't included that I can work mm -hmm. on. Nice, nice. Okay, well, it's... Yeah, that's, I think that for your whole account, because people always talk about, right, I, I try to emphasize this, but like for Legion, people talk about like the member bonus and the grid bonus, and it's like, it, that's a lot of damage, but the, the one that kind of gets forgotten in that is like the Legion coin access and being able to pump out coupons whenever you need them for drop rate and training and that kind of stuff, like that is just so valuable. And it seems to be kind of forgotten when people talk about Legion, it doesn't get emphasized enough. So I always want to make sure to point that out to everyone. like. That's why, like, that's one of the silent OP things about this, uh, about this whole game. Plus, you know, you're going to be set up better, I think, as well for the future when, for the summer update, right? When the Legion artifact system comes out, you'll have more built there, and you can immediately start capitalizing on those stats as well, which you'll need to if you want to maintain your damage, because we'll lose that final damage on the, on the passive, right? So it's uh, yeah, it's good to get that to get that built now. But I think this is the perfect event for you for that, honestly, because um, there's a lot of EXP coupons as well, right? So that'll help you keep everything just going. So I've got high hopes for uh, for for you for your gains at least for this event. I think that's going to be great. Um, so we were talking about yes, and but where we all started was event items. So for the rings, we went into that. Um, you were talking about flames as well, right? You mentioned those. Yeah, flames. We have a lot of flames coming in, and you know I've already yes. put in, I already bought out all the red and all the black flames, and you know put it onto my twilight and put it onto my shoes. But it's just deciding if I want to spend the next hundred and fifty we can buy out, and all the daily logins or. You know, kind of just settle on the 120, settle on the CRAs, the superiors, and just, you know, start throwing them into the next boss mules. Gotcha, yeah. So I, I prefer for boss mules to kind of just use whatever reds you have when you get them to just slowly bring up everything with, with flame advantage. Uh, I kind of let that be like a relatively slow process. Um, but maybe not everyone has that time and wants... To start so the faster you build up a boss mule the faster you can start making money with it but also the faster um the higher you'll have to fund it and the more as a result you'll be pressured maybe a bad word but like you'll feel like you really need to commit to be able to start cashing in otherwise you'll have um you, you know you're just like sitting on on the potential gains the whole time without actually making the gains right um for me it was a much slower process because i just wanted to make sure that i like the character and everything um, but that's that is more of a luxury because didn't, we didn't really need it as much back then. I get we weren't relying on it as much because it just didn't represent such a small, uh, such a large part of our weekly income, right? Um, but um, yeah. So for the flames, I would just purely look at how long you're keeping items when it comes to like Eternals and Black Flames, and when it's just Reds, I would almost like use those more more for the for the bossing mules to like slowly bring stuff up that's that's usually like my strat um black flames like pretty much always just go on weapons um so for you for your weapon like you've got a lot of decks and attack but it could be did you did you ever go into like because uh, 85 
So it's like 21 extra attack. So this is like almost a tier seven naked kind of thing, right? On your crossbow? I think I've spent maybe like 50, 60 flames on it and just yeah. nothing really bites besides that. I haven't got any tier six with damage or tier six with boss. So I'm kind of just, I decided just to settle on that and, mm -hmm. you know, push the rest on the other arcanes that I got yesterday and twilights and everything. Yeah, but th th I think that makes it a pretty good candidate for Black Flame specifically because you've got not necessarily like a shit item. So, you know, if you don't hit with a bunch of Black Flames, it's also not like oh, everything's over now. But if you do, you, but it's also like something you don't necessarily want to lose. If it was just like uh, tier 6 attack and like, I don't know, maybe like 20 decks or something, I would say like a Red Flame this right now, honestly, right? Because that's just how much it could improve. And how much of a, a like general damage? Uh, I have played around with the flame, the flame calculator and stuff like that a little bit to see like the differences in the values between all the types of items and when it comes to like weapon versus all the other items kind of thing. Oh, I haven't messed around too much with that. You know, I kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I understand there's a calculator out there, but I kind of just you know, go go on my own. I'm like, hey, if I get it, I get it. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I don't. You know. Yeah. Rates are just rates, you know? They don't apply yeah. to me all the time. <laughs> no, that's true. I mean, and, uh, and in in any instance, they actually won't, right? But on the aggregate, on the average, like, playing the whole time, eventually they will. That's kind of... Or they should, you know? Provided there's not some weird uh, Wizard of Oz behind the, the screen, you know, pulling the strings, whatever, <laughs> kind of thing. But um, if you look at the calc, it can give you a good idea of, like, how much can you gain at what cost just to make sure that you're prioritizing the right stuff so that doesn't guarantee that you're going to hit it and everything but just so that you mean that on average because i talked in the beginning when i was asking like is it money in money out because that is really good early on because just the chance of making gains is so high that you don't actually want to sit on your money for too long but once you are get further and further into the game if money in equals money out you're actually going to slow down your progress because like waiting for big events basically means that all of the money you have up until that point gets like multiplied by a factor of, of value essentially and so you can make bigger jumps in uh, in changes plus the fact that you'll need longer time to build up backups once you start going 17 star plus on other stuff and you'll need more time to have backups before it even becomes realistic for you to start a project right so in that way the time in between events is kind of like a blessing because it it already automatically gives you that like okay now now you probably want to pause and kind of save up because you know everything is just becomes too high risk at that point does that make sense kind of like how that timing and everything works yeah, it makes sense you know mm -hmm. it's just yeah it makes sense you know just it's also the fact just playing the game you know what i mean and that's you know no, i no, guess what's definitely. deviating between the two yeah, you don't want to have everything be on hold. You want to still feel like you're making progress, right? But what happens is if if you go a little bit too overboard with this, what can happen is that you just every event you throw everything at it, and because you're lose you're decreasing your chances of gains per event, you'll end up having successive events without gains, and then you'll have a long period of time where you start like I didn't make any gains in like the last six months or something, and that will be very demotivating. But if you had saved all of that for six months, the chance that you wouldn't have made any gains in one big event with all that money would have been way lower. So then you end up actually increasing your chances by 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 holding. So you're you're probably near that tipping point. Like once you start like trying to push most of your stuff like into like 21, 22, and like arcanes 19 or beyond, then I would start like saving up for like big projects and you could be more informed by that or more informed like not like you're not informed but you could get informed by that by using the calculators just looking at how expensive is this actually because if i ask you like like how much is a three line attack emblem do you have like a rough estimation of how much that is i think isn't isn't three line it's it's either i'm thinking of either 10 or 40 bill but i don't i think 40 bill is three line prime Okay, so, well, so, already, like, between 10 and 40, there's a pretty big gap there, right? If it was 10, then it would be way higher priority than, than if it was 40. Um, and I can tell you, 3 line Prime is a little bit higher than that. Uh, <laughs> because the chance of hitting a Prime is only, uh, is much lower, right? Um, 
But it's around it's around forty. Yeah, it's a little little over forty off cube sale, a little, and around thirty, a little bit over thirty on off cube sale. So that's roughly where that is. So what you could technically do is like how much final damage, how much total damage do I gain from a line of attack versus a line of 6% stat, right? How much is that worth? How much is the money? It does get a little bit more, like you said in the beginning, like it, a lot of it becomes comes down to number crunching. But eventually, if you don't do that, you might actually be trying to chase some damage. Um, either that gets replaced more quickly than something else or that is just less efficient than other than other. Uh, than other damage. So if you have, you know, backups and you have switch possibilities, that's one thing. Like in the case of an emblem, I mean, you're gonna have to do Saren. I don't know if how much you're looking in that direction. What's your sack at 170? So you could probably be looking at Saren with the with the homies. Have you guys considered that at all? I, I, I think as we came collectively as a group together that once we hit BM, it's going to be a like an actual group progression, not so much of we're coming in as red dot, blue dots and going from there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because most of us were pre reboot players or beginning reboot. So most of us, you know, we already did a lot of this progression before. And now mm -hmm. we're back at the point where it's like, OK, we're at the real, you know, we were at the real um you know, basically starting in game now, and we want to actually be able to do that ourselves and not sit there, you know, with the carry for months on end and go from that. Yeah, but I, th I think if you guys are doing, I mean, yeah, you did the BAs, right? Like, you can check those. Um, yeah. You did the three minute and then the 40 minute. The three minute is with your with your origin, right? Yeah, nature's, nature's truth. Wow, what a name. Um, on on level no sack no no arcane power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think even with. Uh, no rings and the current stuff that you can do. Shit. Yeah, and everyone's around does the same, um, like, sacred power? No, and that, that's, the, that's the other thing. The, the three people that we have are filling. Only one of them is above 270. The other ones are, like, 263. They're gotcha, just straight no. boss mules that they've been playing for, you know, years now. Mm -hmm. But there's no desire uh, for you guys to just... Like with the three of you or the four of you to kind of like see if you could just do, go into normal Saren and just see how it is. Just going to see how far you get. Oh, the three of us most definitely. Like that's something that most definitely we will. Um, okay. It's just a, it's just really seeing where we're at damage wise. You know, we're, we're sure. taking, you know, baby steps. We did Sea Gloom two weeks ago and we'll mm -hmm. probably once this event ends trying to, you know, relook at, okay, can we do Dark Knelt together? Can we do Viela? And then going from there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to but say we like that. Quite you... yet hit that because we're we're all progressing yeah. so much, and this event mm -hmm. is getting us a lot. This event, you know, if none of us got arcane boxes, we were all going to come out of this with two more arcanes each, backups mm -hmm. for stuff, and that's why we're waiting till after this event ends to kind of re-evaluate where we are as a group. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I'm not saying that you like should or that you uh, you know um, anything like that, but I'm just kind of like get, uh, trying to get a height of like how quickly you're moving into that because that gives you information on how long it'll probably take until you get an emblem and that'll give you an idea if it's worth it or not to invest into this one right because it's all you know ultimately it's all connected um okay 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 um and that's and that's what i'm trying to not spend a lot of money on like mm -hmm. you know if you look at a lot of the, the gear that i've put past 20 it's more of the late or in-game gear you know, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to sit there and put too much money on a emblem, not putting too much on, you know, black bean marks, stuff like that, just because the fact there are replacements for it, and they are in the future. You know, CRA 22 was the first thing that I got above 20 stars. I had all of those 21, mm -hmm. 22, and then I started working on Superior, and then Kana Treasure. And yeah. that's what I'm slowly funneling down mm -hmm. until the point where it's like, okay, what is next that is going to be replaced? 
Yeah, so there's, there's two big things, right? One is definitely, like, can you get replaced or not? But the other one is, like, to which extent is it a high-level risk? Because the reason that those go first is because you hold them for so long, but it's also because you get backups the most and the quickest and the earliest, right? So that's why it's a combination of the two. Like, let's say that your emblem, you know, would get replaced by Saren, but you can get, um, but I don't know, for some reason, um... I mean, that's a bad example, but there, there could be... <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that it could be other items that, you know, you can get like five replacements of every single week. Then you probably tap them higher, even if they would be also like ones that you would replace eventually. Or even maybe sooner than other items, because it just kind of free, quote, un, in quotation marks, to, to get it that far. Because of the, mm -hmm. the amount of backups, it's, it becomes lower risk, right? And that risk factor, that's the thing I just want to... Um, yeah, I don't know how much you are like to get into the numbers and to look at the calculators and how much you more just want to do your your general thing. Is it something that you're really attached to or would you be uh, amenable, amenable, whatever the word is, to like um, kind of look more at like the calculators, look at them uh, and at the expected cost to kind of use that to inform your decision, not to dictate your decisions, right? I'm never in favor of that, but just to give you more extra information because I'm usually... I don't really care what decision people ultimately make about their own account and their own, you know, life and their mezzo and everything. But I just want you to have all the all the facts, and then based on those, you make your own decision, and not just because early on, if you make some mistakes, it's whatever. You know, it's you can one more one more week of mezzo, two more weeks of mezzo, you can just kind of override it. But those expense those quote unquote mistakes or in inefficiencies, they get more and more expensive in terms of how many weeks now you're gonna have to wait until you can do that again. And that's what I'm trying to make sure that that doesn't happen in your future because, you know, something wrong with a pitch or something wrong with something else can end up, um, that could end up taking a year or something until you get another one, right? And then that would be unfortunate if that were to happen. No, I mean, I definitely like wouldn't mind looking at calculators. And sometimes, you know, when we're in the group, we kind of talk about, you know, what the rates are for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, I think just a lot of it, too, is I don't really plan on taking this game to, you know, getting into hard cal and getting into hard extreme calos, hard calos, XBM. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really just playing this game as a pastime as of right now. Sure. You know, and I, like, I don't I don't see myself committing this to basically being a full-time job even though i'm playing it right now <laughs> hour wise as a full-time yeah, job i don't want to yeah. fully commit it gotcha. as a full-time job you know you get people that are running you know 12 boss mules they have 60 tennies they're doing every boss that's not something that i'm quite interested in doing or at least in the meantime in my head progressing towards i'm you know just honestly having fun playing with friends you know Yep. If things happen, things happen. If things boom, they boom. If we get farther, we get farther. But I don't think most of us are really looking to progress to, you know, the top 0.1% of this game. Sure, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, yeah, it gets crazy at the top end for sure. Like trying to min-max your server lag for your Fatal Strike procs. That's a little, <laughs> for the culvert runs, that, that it gets a little wild at that point for sure. Um, I can agree with that. Sure. Um, and it's like well, that's why I'm I'm still using a frozen, you know, wild heart. You know, I just I didn't care to cube another Pino secondary because I already had a frozen wild heart legendary. Yeah. No, I get that. And with this potential, like that's something that you could work on eventually. But that again, we'd look at the cost, right, of even getting a better secondary. Then we'd look at what is roughly the gains you could make off of that secondary, and then what is the value per gain, and then we would kind of like look at where would that roughly rank with all of your other upgrades and you're not at that point yet so this one is totally fine uh to have like if you had nothing like if your boss mules were funded and you had nothing to throw solid cubes on i would say you know just get one of those and just throw your spare solid cubes at that right because then you have like 20 like t anywhere from 10 to 20 rolls for free a week and it, you might hit something but at, at this point i mean there's probably like Looking at the emblem, probably 22 in CRA, 20 starring all of your superior, um, working on fourth ring, probably tapping Black Bee Mark to 20, Twilight Mark to 21, getting all the arcanes to 17. Probably when you're thinking about like arcanes from 17 to 19 and you're waiting for those backups, that's probably when, I, when you want to roll something better on the emblem. Again, not that you have to do it at that point, but that's roughly where financially that starts getting into the efficiency. So that's still a while out. So that's not something that I would even advise at this point. Um, it's more that the general stance of like if something happens it happens i 
totally up with that because people who are emotionally invested in trying to get pitches is just i i just i feel for those people because you're just gonna either hit something that you had you know no control over basically or you're just gonna get disappointed which is just unfortunate um but something like a black bee mark i would get backups and if there's an event uh you know you could just try to try to roll it because what is your next upgrade going to be it's pretty much only like an an eye patch right That, that's really just the next big things and I, i've been pushing mm -hmm. dom pendants pushing black beans i've boomed four black bean and four dom pendants in a span yeah. of a week yeah and i've i've seen only 18 star on black bean mark once and the rest of them you know boomed at 17 so mm -hmm. just really just waiting but it's also at the point two now where it's like i'm looking at okay do i want to start sweet water do i want you know, do I want to put time and effort into that? Do I want to take away time from farming to work on that for, you know, the minimum gains that I'm going to get from switching mm -hmm. from Black Bean to Sweetwater? And then it possibly, I possibly, you know, get unlucky and, you know, the next week I'll get a, I'll get an eye patch. And it's like I wasted all that time, all that effort and resources and now I'm having to restart it again. Yeah, if you had a pat mark or something, I would do Sweetwater to, like, transpose because then... You can realistically get up to something that's actually equivalent of an eye patch, and then if you don't get the drop, or you know if you have one, you can let your friend maybe get the. Well, you're probably soloing those, but like you can, um, you can have a easier like alternative for the eye patch, so you don't feel as bad or not feel as bad, but you don't feel like you're not progressing if you don't get that drop. So that's one kind of like weight that you can take off. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. But um, I would definitely focus around those events just because your meso efficiency starts going up. But it's totally in your right to decide like, well, if an event is like more than a month away, I'm just going to tap now. But the problem, the problem generally isn't getting the money back. The problem is getting the backups back, right? That's usually the yeah. the problematic thing. And uh, and that's kind of yeah. the other thing as well is what our income for primals is quite a lot higher now, especially if you're doing those high level bosses. And if you're not making meisters, that does free up for now the primals to making dominator pendants so you could you could think about doing that if you have those resources that is something to consider um yeah, because you know, what would, would want to consider and, you know with us having the um the sunny sunday for 510 i'm now saving my backups you know before everybody was like oh we're gonna get it in minotaur blah 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 but mm. nothing was really for sure put out so like okay i still need to progress i need to tap i'm not at the point of the game where i can hold everything and mm -hmm. go from there so yep. now that we actually have this outline of this is happening when then mm -hmm. it's like okay now i'm sitting on dom pendants i'm sitting on three reinforced earrings and kind of just going from there yeah yeah that's good because you just want to you want to make those big jumps on things that you transfer hammer that's that's important if the other ones you know uh, whatever if it like b mark doesn't go or it goes up to 19 and you don't have any more backups or something like that, you know. Uh, or you have one backup and you don't want to risk it past that. that. That's all well and good. But for the superiors, you'll have to make that big jump from 17 to, to 20. Do you plan to... Uh, I guess for that transfer, you're aware of the... for At least for belt and earring, it's uh, more risk-free if you have a backup, right? Because you can transfer into the second one and see if you can tap down 1 to 21 immediately. If you want to... If that's like your temporary goal or are you okay with 20 stars some people are very anti <laughs> anti 20. Um, i would hit 21 my superior belt's 21 i got that from a uh, 22 clover belt and my next project i guess for starring that isn't 17 arcanes is going to be 22 ing a reinforced and unfortunately i'm going to lose you know the good pot that i have for the earrings but i have to deal with that as time goes on um Oh yeah, for your current um, your current superior earrings, where they they have like the yeah eighteen and mezzo. I mean, eventually you can't. I, I would say like at seventeen, it's fine to have like drop and mezzo on your superior. But if you're gonna get them up to twenty twenty one, then I would focus then on rerolling one hundred percent for damage and making sure that the drop and the mezzo comes from other pieces at that point, because then you're really specifying that this is like only damage use essentially. So, like, whether you have to recube from this potential or from epic potential, it's basically the same cost, right, on average. It's just the, the T-ring up is, like, an extra, what, 700 mil or something, which is, at, at that point, that's a very small price to pay compared to the total project price. So you prefer 22 to 
to 21 down instead of 21 to 20 and then tap back up from 20 to 21 on the on the on the target item I'm a 22 gamer you know when i was when i originally first started yeah you know, i think i got my first piece of my first piece of 20 star within my first month and then they were like oh tap it tap it tap it and unfortunately you know i said with the uh the uh, four things that I have above 20 stars right now, nothing has boomed over 20. Now, granted, I know that that's not how it usually is, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. that everything that I've gotten to 20 has hit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not going to settle with 21, you know, I'm, I mean, with 20 stars. I'd rather just get things to 22, transfer it to 21, and just, you know, call it a day at 21, and the things that mm -hmm. have backups, and I'll hit them to 22. Right. I mean, I mean compared to... 21 to 20 and then back up to 20 compared to one straight switch from 22 to 21 because like the 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 former strat is is in uh the grand scheme is on average it's cheaper but it's a little riskier on the on the final product right because oh, you're the, tap, the final product from 20 to 21 yeah because basically what you're comparing is getting one item from 20 to 22 compared to getting two items okay. from 20 to 21 and that second situation, that's more likely to happen than that former one. Yeah. So it might be something to consider I, I think is that's what if I'll you don't have enough doing. backups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I'll end up doing for the Meisters because I'll probably end up getting a couple Meisters to 21 and then putting it to my uh, Superior and then tapping Superior to put it for a Slime Ring. But that's, you know, still down the road and... You know, waiting for mesos, waiting for, you know, another superior, waiting for slime rings. And I think that's the yeah. route I'm going to go for the superior, you know, for at least the ring itself. Yeah, if you do the if you do the superior to slime with you, you you are pushing back most likely the the lower risk 21 to 22 superior ring, right? Because then that's what you want those backup uh, coins for, specifically for the ring and the earring. Um, uh, sorry, for the ring and the pendant. Of course, for the belt and the earring, eventually you can get backups. Um, do you have any superior backup right now? Or is it just reinforced? Just reinforced for earrings. I have two superior belts, but it's like, again, you know, my, my superior belt's 21. So yeah. it's it's, it's going to sit at 21 for a long time. Yeah, yeah. But you're okay for going 21 on the other superiors as like the next because that's probably your next project right saving up backups and, and going for that that seems like software wise that seems the next move um and yeah. then in between in between that and the next like shining in the summer we probably have cube sale so it'll probably be a matter of like walking up your arcanes uh trying to yep. tap fodder and get into the superiors up to 20 uh, like 2021 20, 22 whatever you decide to do specifically there depending on backups um Maybe try Twilight Mark, Black Bee Mark, right? Um, but then it'll mostly be saving up for um, cubing. Um, you, how's the cooldown reduction situation with Wild Hunters? Does that matter at all? Um, it's from it's what Wild Hunter Discord basically spoke about. It is perfectly okay to sit on a three-line attack at. I mean, three-line stat attack. A CRA mm -hmm. until you get Eternals. Right, and then you need to make sure you're min-maxing harder kind of thing. Yeah, and then Eternals, you can get away with minus four, but again, you can use three-line stat on Eternal also. I think if you have a... Um, if I think... I, we were just speaking about that together. I think it's if you have certain Oz rings, you don't need to have a, um, a minus four hat. Mm hmm the cooldown reduction is probably more if you're using a continuous i'm guessing then you get more value i, I think i think that's probably. what it is and if you're yeah. ring swapping well you guys are three minute right no we're two minute you get two minute burst oh because of fishes didn't you have like a one skill no everything like is two minutes minute? oh mm -mm. Didn't that no everything's two minutes but you have Our something that's like... i think used to be three minutes yeah Oh, that got moved to two, just like with the uh, arc. And you have something. Yeah, I think like the bind was like second, two right? ten seconds. Oh, uh, yeah, I think the bind was two hundred and ten seconds. But that was like four years ago, I think. Two ten. That sounds like a nightmare. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, back in the day, you could like, the wild hunter bind didn't. Uh, it like stacked with other binds. I remember that as well. 
You have like regular bind, then wild hunter bind, and then <laughs> then Yorozu bind. Wild hunter bind apparently back in the day was also able to have a longer bind duration too, based on the damage it did. But that was well after I'd already quit and then came back and that was removed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they put that in all the like class binds now, but that's why they keep the bind. Uh, it has to do with something, a certain percentage of the to boss's total HP that is done with the bind, and then that percentage will extend the duration of the bind. But that's why they make binds in general not do too many lines, or the keep the percentage relatively low, so that the duration of the bind basically doesn't really get extended by by all that much. Usually it's like 0.1 or 0.2 seconds or something like that, so it's not really that, eff that uh, effective. Okay, so you're full, yeah, you're full too, okay. Yeah, because if you're if you're like double ring swapping, then you probably don't need the cooldown reduction as much, and you can just go full stat. But if you have, if you're using a continuous that I'm imagining, then you're more of a DPM memer, so then you should get more value out of the cooldown reduction. Is what I'm uh, what I'm thinking. Yeah, if you do fifty percent of the boss HP, it's twenty second bind. Yeah, but if you think if you can do fifty percent of the boss's HP with a bind skill, then you don't need 20 seconds to kill it. <laughs> so it's kind of, yeah, it defeats its own purpose kind of thing. Um, yeah, for the cubing, it will probably be emblem and, and weapon time. Except, like, if you hit, of course, right? If you hit on the Star Force events, then it'll be a matter of getting two and a half line stuff on the things that you hit. Trying to hit those 27s. And um, yeah. probably double crit damage, right, on the gloves. That's uh, that's up there. That's usually like around 8 bill or something. So double crit damage. Or since you're an archer, if you hit 8 crit damage and 2 lines of dex, that, that's really close. So you could opt to keep that. Or if it's like 8 crit and 23% or higher dex, then that's actually slightly better for you than, than double crit damage. So you could keep that as well if you hit that. Because of the you know vicious shot, uh, vicious uh, shot, reduced efficiency later. Yeah, and you could, uh, you could after that think about like hybrid stuff for training. Yeah, that's something that I've I've I've, I've tried spending a lot on, and it's just it's it's not coming my way. But you know, I know mm -hmm. once cube sale hits, I'll probably re go through. And you know, it does suck right now only farming with 169 drop rate. But you know, mm -hmm. just gotta do what you gotta mm -hmm. do. You know, I know. I guess that's the next thing we can probably progress into is you know the familiar situation. It's yep. basically non-existent right now. You know, I have my two 15% IEDs, and you know, I have my medium drop 50%. But that that's really it. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, that's something what usually people either when they hit 275 or hit 280, that's something that they have to think about is like just going back to Limina for your main character and then just instead of, you know, grinding for purely for fragments and stuff like that. Because if you once people's Hexa Matrix is built out more as well, right, like your time on fragments goes down significantly in terms of value and then time spent on familiars instead to build up like bossing fams. And that kind of stuff becomes much more um, appealing and just more efficient as you go there. It's either that or bring another character up that you know is just going to be like a decent boss meal, but you don't really need the familiars on there, and then you siphon them off from there and bring them to your um, to your main character. Um, it's either that or really just bringing your high level character back and really just using it as like a money slash uh, droplet slash familiar farm and bringing up the drop rate because, I mean, honestly, I don't think you can ever really go wrong in trying to get your large drop sooner rather than later because it's just gonna make the efficiency of your fragments, uh, the amount of fragments during your training that much higher. So I, and you know, faster backups again, right? We're, <laughs> we're back on that, uh, on that bullshit. Uh, faster backups, faster pitched, more options earlier on to, to make those big jumps with those upgrades and drop rate is just, just such a progression amplifier because it gives you extra weeks of chances on the limited amount of drop chances from bosses that we have right now. 
So I, I would, wouldn't even be opposed if you say right now, like, I'm going to stop grinding and I'm starting to, you know, I'm just going to wop for familiars instead until I hit large drop and then go back to grinding. Like, I think that would be fine too, but ultimately it comes down to what you enjoy and what you can put energy into, of course. But slow down your 275 slow tremendously. Your <laughs> and, 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 like, I guess the hard reason for the 275 push is just being able to start dailies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you know, the, a, the quicker yeah. I get the dailies, the quicker I can start, you know, start that. If I if I don't hit 275 in two months, when well, I'm two months behind and, you know, mm -hmm. farming fams now for two months compared to farming fams in two months, it's just figuring out, like, what's really going to be the, you know, best time management wise. It's, yeah, the thing is that you could probably fully crunch that if you know, like, your percentage an hour but one of the like unknown factors is exactly how much does drop rate really affect everything and does the 100 percent of familiars is it like additive multiplicative whatever the fuck like in in its own respect and how are certain items affected we just don't have that detail and i think that alone is enough of a variable that that could swing make it swing one way or the other um yeah. if you if you assume you know like all the drop rate up all the drop rate additive and it's somewhat linearly, you know, affecting your drop rate of items, then I think in pretty much all cases, it would be most efficient to just first hit your large drop before you're just moving on for, to anything. If it's like a character that you know you want to push like past 260 essentially. Um, but it's going to feel really shit until you hit it. But then once you hit it, you're also not going to like feel it instantly because it's not like pitch is gonna start raining from the heavens, you know. <laughs> it's not like you know now every monster you kill drops a fragment. Like it, it, it's it's just, you kind of just have to like trust that system and kind of just like know that you're probably making the right decision. But you're not gonna get that instant feedback. Not the same way that if you use a cube and you hit the potential that you want, like boom, you have the gain, you know. It's just you know, yeah. Or you reveal a familiar and it's boss damage, and now boom, you gain thirty percent boss damage. Like that's just so much more instant, so much more tangible. And since the other systems are so hidden, it that hesitancy is totally understandable that you're like, yeah, you're kind of like hoping that it works and that it goes and that you're not someone who needs to open like 120 epics before they see uh, drop rate, but that's possible. But I think right now, you know, Legion now, grind up to 275, a little bit of foot of the gas on the main, daily gamer, maybe look for a side character, more bossing wheels, and then I would just get more into fams, honestly. And if you get the large drop and you want to keep going, you want to work more on the hexamatrix, that's cool. Or if you want to use the large drop to just get more fams and work on boss fams, that's that's fine too. Yeah. Think about. <laughs> yeah, or if you like another character at that point, or you like training on that character more and you just want to take those familiars off, you can do that. Um, Hyper burn, you know, that's, that's still like three months away, but... Before you know it, those three months will be be over. But by then, you're probably like also reassessing. Like I don't know how much time I'm gonna put into the game right now, and, and what makes sense. But there's there, there's there's options, you know. Yeah. Makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Talking to uh, about the the hexa. <laughs> Wondering why I'm going a little off off skew with the hexa. We're supposed to. Uh... Our main final damage comes from Jagstorm. We're supposed to push that to 19 before we get everything to 9, and then push that to 29 before you go after that. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as we as we started with the conversation, you know, the computer the computer doesn't allow me to do 40 second uh, <laughs> 40 second bursts, so I have to take what I can in the five seconds I'm not lagging and go from there. Is it really just like press burst and then your computer just kind of freezes? It, 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 it's really dependent, you know, sometimes I can do a whole cold, like, there's been weeks where, you know, my culvert's at 3.5, and I'll do it the next week, and I'm at 1k, because I lag for 40 seconds straight, and it makes all the bursts. <laughs> nice, yeah, when something is that precise on, like, timings and everything. Yeah. Also, what Cloth said, too, our next mastery is, again, another Jag skill buff, and that actually takes over the slot. We're supposed to get that to 19 mm -hmm. before... I think we get anything to nine, so everything stays at one, and then you go from one to nineteen. Oh yeah, it, or no, no, it's, it's, like one, the, it's, it's one to nine for Jagstorm, and then ten to nineteen for the mastery. Then the next mastery, you get, and then everything else goes to nine. 
I think for quite a few classes, I think the Night Lord one is also good. The Demon Avenger one, you want to take the... I think you want to take the new Mastery to 29. Right after you unlock your fourth boost node to level one. <laughs> like, that's how... <laughs> that's how fucked it is. Because <laughs> we basically just use that skill yeah. for to prevent death, so... It's like, uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be really class. Yeah. I, it's just like a, a little bit of a throwback to way back in the day when you had like skill builds for classes, right? Like on which level, which skill points you should take because of how much damage it would give you. And now we've gone full circle and now we're back at that. People used to look on like Ayumi Love and stuff for like, skill builds for classes. I guess, I guess a lot of the confusion that I have with that type of stuff is, you know, this game is progressing more and more to you need to do your most amount of damage in a, in a short window of time. So if that's why I'm... Um, yeah, if you're um, mid-maxing on a boss fight, right, and it, the burst meta is just so real because of how much damage you can squeeze in a short amount of time, specifically if you're working with supports. Uh, but if you have a different team setup or you're doing bosses that are just not at that, like, cutting edge of, like, you need to do everything perfectly or you just can't possibly kill the boss... Then it very quickly shifts away from min maxing within like a 30 second or a 35 or whatever you have at window and more towards just like overall DPM increase. It's just, you know, the, especially it, it's really like a Kalos thing where you can't really just be like sitting around and having him walk around and doing like multi bursts in there while you're trying to cleanse 16 machines that are shooting you down at the same time. That's a very, yeah. I, th I think already for Kaling, the setup for Kaling is already more, more DPME in that sense. But again, if your party composition is built towards like two minute burst windows or three minute burst windows, then just min maxing that over everything else is just going to improve your your um, your BA more, right? Your your damage output, yeah. I've always also had the impression, you know, who needs to learn who needs to learn mechanics and have hands when you can just big the you know big numbers go burn boss dies, you know. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you say not that intense? It's this is literally our fourth skill node here to one, and then we have ma the origin to nine and the new must record to thirty. It's right after that. <laughs> it's literally what I just said, and we have the other. So this is our this is our like top uh, boost node. To 30, then our shittiest boost node to 1 after that. <laughs> and our ma matrix, our first matrix to 29, our first master core to 29 is already here. And then the second one to 30, yeah. <laughs> That's how much uh, more damage it's gonna increase. Because it's our main ad bossing attack, basically, that uh, the DA is getting. And for Arc as well, it's like all of the Spectra skills, so all of the attack weaving ones, and adding lifesteal to all of those as well. Which is, uh, which is nice. If you props for playing Arc, I hate it leveling that character and we'll never touch him again. <laughs> I loved it. I think a lot of people in the beginning, when they don't put on their spell bullets, it's like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, yeah. It's, it was just really strong compared to other classes when it came out. They've brought up the other classes tremendously to catch up to the characters that were overperforming, and Arc was definitely one of the ones that was overperforming. Like, the the third job skill arc where you have like a full screen FMA in a 48 second cooldown. Uh, full screen FMA, it's just, it's just an FMA. Um, but that's also an iframe that you can also hold for up to five seconds and that you can move in and that takes a little bit of HP. Like that skill as a third job skill was like stronger than what classes had in their V matrix at the time. So that alone was like, this character's busted. <laughs> And still at this point, like it's you know way better iframe than yeah uh, than pretty much anything and the damage from it. But yeah, it's a uh, it's its own thing. It's not not everyone's cup of tea. Sometimes I get frustrated when I'm failing animation cancels and I'm flying through the map and dying to some dumb shit. It's uh definitely not always a good time. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was just undeniably good back then, and I was looking for something else to play because the DA was just shit. Um, it's, it's it's decently mediocre now, but it was just completely forgotten. It didn't really have a a fifth job for like I don't know four years or something, five years. So it was just yeah. What is shit? I thought he currently still is. <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I think I'd say we we're in like the middle bunch. Uh, depending on the content, we're slightly above average or or we're you know 
a little bit below average. But we're we're like in that in that middle bunch. But I think that's where our forty classes are like in that middle bunch. You know, depending on the situation, one class is going to shine a little bit more than another. Um, but we're yeah, I think we're in a good area of like class balancedness in general. But there's uh, some stuff that trickles down from KMS versus GMS, and then there's some stuff that trickles down from heroic versus interactive. So it'll never truly be balanced, of course. But yeah, no, it's definitely not a. <laughs> when people are like, "What what should be like my bossing mules, or what should be my next main?" Like DA is never one that really like comes to mind. It's like seeing in Reaper Central people talking about. Uh who should be their next bossing mule and people will start asking questions about you know da stuff like that or cannoneer and people are just like ah eh, no no <laughs> i think they could be okay but they're just very dpm heavy so it's when you know what you're doing and you know what the boss is doing you can you can fund them pretty easily but like cannoneer you need to tax speed plus one crit rate also isn't the best um but if you fund it strong enough you can just always press like one button kill a boss one button kill a boss and you can just go from one to the next you don't have to wait for binds and bursts and any of that same thing with the da if you know where the boss is you know the mechanics you can just walk around it kill it with frenzy uh if you get in, in, a, in a bind you press um you press blast and then you survive everything um like I started with my first character DA, and like my first big boss was C Queen, and that was just a cakewalk because she couldn't do anything to me, right? Because everything is still like flat damage. So and the fire yeah. just a life steal through everything. So I thought this boss was a total joke. It wasn't until probably like a year later or something that I got to see Array on another character, and was like, wow, Queen is one of the hardest bosses in the fucking game at that point because. There's like no way with all the healing you have to do and the repositioning and then the, the mirror and then the healing when you die to that and it's like there's so much going on. But yeah, those boss fights were very different compared to... Now it's like if you can't kill CRA, just go train for two days, come back and nuke it, right? So it's like a, the, the the speed with which you progress That's at that stage. Really how it is. Yeah, so <laughs> wild. Kane, yeah, I might do the Kane. You're thinking about Kane for for Hyperburn? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I my I mean that's that's the reason why I'm pushing so hard too on the on the main. I want to get this account at least to uh, you know maybe the do or duo maybe trio or solo C10 e and then mm -hmm. just leave it at that. You know I you know yeah. had fun playing Wild Hunter, but I don't think it's something long term. But it's also again waiting for um, you know waiting for whatever's gonna happen with the game if we don't yeah. get the uh, if we don't get the um, if we don't get the patch put through, then I'm going to make another character and, you know, make, you know, make a new main. But if we do get it, then I'm stuck playing Wild Hunter until, you know, <laughs> quit the game. Yeah, we can still do Liberation for like eight months, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like this, this character, like I said, it's going to be lived. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be up there, you know, maybe 280 by the time I'm done with it. But yeah, I don't think it's going to be the, you know, the class kind of like you, you switched off, you know, your your DA. You still play it, but your arc is your new character. It's probably going to be the same with me for Kane or Corsair. You mm -hmm. know, I'm still deciding on Kane or Corsair right now. Yeah, I mean, I, you just have to choose when it comes to Hexamatrix, kind of. I, I mean, you could do like, okay, I'm going to get some like level 9s and some level 15s here, and then I'm going to shift it again towards the other one. But... I mean, yeah, you have to you have to make some decisions. I feel like the both the parties are doing well now, so I don't think any of the parties need more damage. So I'm okay with the situation I'm in now, and my solo uh, speed of all the bosses is fine, honestly. Um, there's still a big shift as well between the two characters for me, is because the DA doesn't have the familiars either. Like I have. 15 ID and maybe like a 3% attack one, that's it. But the arc has 90% boss, so that is that's still a big gap as well between the two characters at this point that you know would be cool if it got, that got bridged. But that's the thing that I'm also thinking like, what do I do with familiars? When do I do familiars? I'm getting some here and there, but um, right now I'm buying booster packs with that because for some reason it's really important to me that I get my uh, my sets of, uh, of badges complete. That's the one thing I want to get. But, you know, if it's a bunch of different types of familiars, I can't get anything out of that anyway. Um, but, yeah, you, you want to make sure you don't uh, spread yourself too thin. And you want to make sure that you don't let the game really decide what you what you do, but that you make the decisions, right? Which is, which is yeah. tricky. Because sometimes you have to swim against the stream. 
when it would be way easier yeah. to swim with the with the water. So, um, well, it's just yeah. a lot of it. Just there's not gonna be you know if we get one for one what what goes through. We're I'm not gonna have the uh, yeah. the mesos to be able to fund an entire new character. You know, but we'll, if it doesn't go yeah. through, then I will have the ability to, and that's that's kind of just what's you know what I'm sitting with is if you know if it doesn't, then I have the mesos. If it does, I'm not gonna have it. Well, again, I'll maybe that's be also... able to push the cane to you know see Tenny as a group, but nothing really past that. No, it'll be well, it'll just become a different game in terms of what your expectations are and how quickly you'll be expected to progress. But on the other hand, also where the money comes from. I mean, like Ursa's being gone doesn't feel like a huge thing but that is you know like three bill um a month like extra extra money right like that's not like negligible that's like what 36 bill in a year that's that is a nice little extra uh if you do that but the fact that they said like they're adding more ways of of making money i hope they're not all just connected to buy it from us for maple points right but there should be still things coming things on the way that will be able to make us money but the problem for us is that we haven't oh and even more so for korea is that we haven't seen what those might be and how much that might be and uh, anything like that so it is possible that yeah changes go through but then at the same time in korea we see like changes coming there that not like compensate but like more contextualize it making less fucking horrible uh <laughs> uh so that that is possible as well right um, I, I know that people adapt as well, pretty well, it's, but it's always hard to go, like, down a step like that, that, that always, yeah, yeah. that's, that's harder for some people than for others, of course, um, but yeah, I, I think it still comes down to, like, the quality of the playing, if you're still hanging out with friends and you're doing things together, I feel like that adds a lot of value as well, but you might as well do that in a different, I don't know if you guys play League or whatever, like, you can, you can jump into a lot of games with, like, three or four people and, and have a, have a good time doesn't necessarily have to be this one right and get play next and what we're doing you know sleeg or dota or some of us may be thinking about going back to lost ark or you know desert mm -hmm. online it's a it's a plethora of stuff we have to look at yeah if, especially if you're like mmo hopping there's always big updates everywhere going on so there could be other games that like you feel deserve your time more that's definitely a thing. Everyone should quit Maple. <laughs> I agree. Oh, everyone should make decisions based on what they want to do rather than what they feel the, you know, whatever, whatever game they play at the time is demanding of them. That's definitely, definitely a case. Um... How do you feel we are in terms of uh, addressing questions you had and contextualizing stuff because we've been you know hopping around a little bit topic to topic is there any specific stuff that we're still thinking like i still could use some input on this thing we really covered most things like i said there wasn't really too much in-depth stuff it was kind of just you know a generalized you know kind of what's you know what's really next to work on you know mm -hmm. i see a lot of people they come in here they're like okay well should i flame this from 120 to 130 and you know like i said none of that was really what i had questions on you know it's just more so of a generalized you know what's uh yeah you know what's to get on next which we covered that you know walking up the arcane already new and you know kind of saving and working on flaming a couple things working on cubing a couple things and most of that we you know covered and answer the questions about fams and everything so yeah, for I guess specifically for Black Flame, so I would look at the weapon, see if you can hit something, you know, sexy, if you hit it to your 7, or if you hit some big, like, boss damage and all stat combination with it to your 6, something like that. Um, if you do hit that, then everything goes towards Arcanes, right? Try to slowly walk those up, but anything that goes into, like, in the direction of, like, a 140 flame score is usually, that would be a very solid uh, goal. If you hit some, if you hit anything that's pitched, you could throw them at that at them. So that the trace can at least uh, maintain that, and then hopefully in like a year and a <laughs> yeah. half, or hopefully on the first one, of course. But hopefully within a reasonable time frame, we can actually equip it and have it as an upgrade. But you're gonna get into the point where, yeah, things will replace it, but when, and you know, you still gotta start instead of planning for it happening, you gotta 
kind of like work on what if it doesn't happen kind of thing. But yeah, Black Mage progress looks good. Everything goes first time. time. <laughs> yeah, that's that would be nice. Yeah, but there will be some there will be some traces. That's uh, like an inevitable situation, basically. But it's good that you got those arcanes now. At least you uh, make some uh, some headway on that. It, you know, hopefully it keeps going. But you know, it's just waiting for money and waiting for the RNG to let me, you know, tear stuff up. Yeah. I think I think shooting for seventeen like right away. I think that's gonna be uh, a little little out of reach, Mesa wise. I think I have to walk things up. You know, usually what I was doing before is the minute I got it, okay, seventeen. I kept tapping till seventeen. But I think mm -hmm. with it being, you know. 160 mil a pop. I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't safeguarding keep that and past 15. That's just there's there's no way. I mean, for the first pieces, right? Like, uh, maybe if because there's usually some time in between, and for the first pieces you can once you have like the full set. But then going past that, because like the last time I tried to do that, I got an armor box on my um, Adele, and they were all 17. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to walk them up like off event so that I don't have to open the box. But I ended up getting. Two 19s, one 18, and then the other 18 boom. So that one went back down to 17. But that cost me 55 bill because it was like off event. And I was like, you know, five stars for 55 bill. Like, I could make the money back, right? For me, that's like less than two weeks of bossing. But if you're making like, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 bill, something like that, a week that's somewhere between like four to six weeks of money back, that's, that's kind of rough to <laughs> just like tap that. Yeah, exactly. And if you do it during a 5, 10, 15, or doing 30% off, you just save so much money. Because 15 to 16 is just actually fake. Like, there's no way it's 30%. It's like, I feel like it's 11% or something at best, but you do like 15 fails in a row, you finally get to 16, and then the very next step, you just back down to 15. Like, it's just never ending. <laughs> <laughs> right, MMO? Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that. I don't think we're going to see it before like 2027 or 2028 or something. Yeah. Maybe a beta in twenty twenty seven or something. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. Two again, you know that would be fun. Sorry, what did you say? I said we can all just quit Maple Story for Maple yeah. Story two if they ever decide to come back. Yeah, that was a uh, two was an interesting. I mean, it was such a departure from one as well. It was just a completely different game, it had the same name, but I think only in name was there like similarities. I mean, like you know the names of the bosses and stuff like that, but it's not at all, I think, comparable. It only spoke to the same people, I think, just because of the, the names and the, the brand, but it's a completely different game experience. Well, it was. Because <laughs> it's still in Korea, and uh, I'm already looking at what they're gonna do with like Maple Worlds and stuff, see if, uh, like the more mini games, Robloxy thing, right? And Maple N is pushing more but i don't know what that's gonna do with like nfts and everything that's gonna be uh <laughs> that might be a shit show yeah. we'll see I'm, I'm surprised somebody hasn't made a one for one you know current maple story and maple world but we'll give it a year or two and i'm sure somebody will push that out and then we can all switch over to play that game instead okay that sounds like a good plan uh, Riot announced, oh, just announced that they're doing a major reset on development of the MMO and going dark for the next couple of years. What are they doing in that time? Weren't they releasing, like, a fighting game as well? When when can we get any information on that? I saw, like, actual characters battling, I want to say, like, over a year ago. I feel like a company with that kind of money could just shit out a game, no? <laughs> or would it just be bad? They need it to be perfect before they release it. I feel like people just want that stuff. Very like, cool. thank you very much for the thing. <laughs> yeah. That. Oh. Are you good? Sorry, I couldn't hear it all that. I uh, was saying thank you for the uh, the review. I got bossing mm -hmm. about twenty minutes, so I got to get prepared and get. Oh uh, yeah. Get all ready for that. Yeah, for sure. Get prepped. Good luck on drops. And uh, yeah, good luck on the next uh, tapping and everything. Hope it all works out. But yeah, you'll be in the chat, so you'll let us know when uh, something hits or whatever. As always, thank you very much for the help. Yo, you're welcome. Have a good one. Alright, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Alright, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, nothing...
no specific topics we delve really deep into, but more like an overall, like how to progress your account, how can you can use, how can you use the value and the time that you have at your disposal in a somewhat efficient way, so you're not completely foregoing your efficiency, but you're still focusing on doing what you want and still doing it your own way without feeling too forced, right? Um, so yeah, if you're in a similar position, if you're moving in a similar way, is that how the kids say it these days? Uh, hopefully this gave you some insight on how to like prioritize certain stuff. Uh, when we're talking about the calculators, those are all available in my chat, just like other commands with information. We didn't use them for this, but if you check any of the other uh, coaching sessions I have, you'll see those used quite a bit in terms of like keeping track of where you're at, what is the next content that you could be doing, and uh, you know, what are the expected costs of certain projects, etc. So you can use those in my Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash scarter. Simply put an exclamation mark and then a topic, or just put exclamation mark help, and then that will give you all of the information that you might possibly need in there. Some of those you still have to use in the Twitch chat because of, you know, how it's set up, but you can get access to most of the stuff there. If you want one of these coaching sessions, Check out exclamation mark coaching in the Twitch chat or check the description of the video. And if you want a chance to win one of these for free, leave a comment with your Discord name saying that you would like to win and how insanely amazing this video was, of course, and super helpful. Uh, and you could be one of the two people that I draw at the end of the month for a free session if you're interested in that. Other than that, I wish you guys a happy birthday. <laughs> There's one person watching right now is like, oh, how did he know it's your birthday? Uh, happy birthday, uh, Andy. Happy birthday, bro. And um, yeah, for anything else, uh, for, for everyone else, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you either in the next one or live over at Twitch. Thanks for checking it out.